Welcome, Luke. What up, Harry? What's going on, man? Seeing you in a minute. We met at Ridley's doing mm-hmm. that class. We did. You talked to Bill recently. Have I talked to Bill? Uh, last time I talked to Bill, he performed in a show. I was, I think I DJ'd. I either DJ'd or performed in the show, but got to You DJ'd about. the show? Uh, yeah, like I was with uh, the Future Comedy Show. Like I perform in uh, Mike Ball, the producer. He lets me DJ sometimes to like get show time for like the next show. Oh shit, so, <laughs> that's what's up. But yeah, it's it's pretty funny just to play music for the guys before they get up and like when they're getting off stage and stuff like that. Do they tell you what music they want, or do you just play something cool? I get to like kind of like free ball it a little bit, like just work with it. That's awesome. What, what did you play for Bill? Do you remember? I do not. Do but, you are you allowed to play like actual songs? Or do you just play, like, music? Oh, no, yeah, like, uh, he just has, like, a laptop, and I just go on iTunes and just pick random oh, wow. songs. Like, got a good playlist, like, some Notorious B.I.G. and some shit like that. That's, okay, because I, I try to put on, like, just regular songs for, like, my YouTube channel, and they will not let me do that shit. Really? Because it's, like, copyright. Holy shit. So, like, well, <laughs> no, I mean. <laughs> Sorry, copyright. <laughs> right, like, as long as you're not recording it, I don't think it matters. But, like, I can't, yeah. like, put, like, someone else's music because I have, and then I think I put, like, Black and Yellow. Like, really? Wiz Khalifa, and, like, I got a me- message from, like, the producers, and they are like, hey, so, you can't do that. And I'm like, all right, all right, my, my bad. It's weird. <laughs> People are sensitive as shit to that stuff, so. Yeah, no. But Bill's crazy, man. Bill's crazy, like, as a performer. He's just, like, when he gets up there, like, it, it was pretty much exactly, like, how he described it in class of just like just taking control and just like not really giving a fuck what people think he Mm -hmm. destroyed man it was awesome and like in his mind he like thought he didn't do as well but i mean he he fucking killed well when he doesn't do as well that's probably amazing to the rest of us and when we don't do well we really don't do well no we do (laughs) uh trying out new jokes is probably one of the hardest things for me yeah oh for me too it's i'm doing a 15 minute set tomorrow where at uh just here on campus oh dope and like I've never done 15 minutes before, but I put I just put two seven minutes together and pretty mm-hmm. much matched them up. Yeah, that's dope. And I realized like when you do 15 minutes, your seven minute ones will become so much better. Really? Yeah, because I've just like you cut out like a bunch of, like the BS that you don't really need, mm-hmm. and then you realize like wow, I suck at comedy, and then you go back, you just make it so much better. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, yeah, I feel that. Have you ever seen someone bomb on stage like completely? Uh. I've seen, yeah. Oh, here we go. All right, I'm going to hear this. Go for it. I, I love hearing bombing stories. Um, Wait, was it you? Well, no, I mean, I've, like, I mean, I've bombed. I, I think everybody bombs. Everybody has those times where, like, you try the new jokes, and then you're just like, well, that didn't work. And I've, well, yeah. I've done, I've done, like, seven minutes on a Wednesday night, and then seven minutes Thursday night. So Wednesday night killed Thursday night, like, it's like, well, I might want to quit now. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go home and write some new material. Gonna, <laughs> right. We're going to rethink everything. But no, I was at, I can't remember where I was at, but, uh. This one girl, she went up there and she was just super vulgar and just create, like, just wasn't the crowd for it. It was like more mature crowd. And like, she did, like, she was just talking about just like sex and like her vagina and shit like that. And like, you could just see these old people were just like, Amy not. Schumer, that whole thing. Yeah. And it just like, it just wasn't working. And like, she should, I'm, I, I mean, I'm new. I can't give any tips, but I, I feel like if you're bombing like that, you're just like, ooh, may want to move on from the vulgar stuff. But you got to stick to it sometimes. You just got to not give a fuck. What, what I've noticed. As not just in comedy, but in general, just because you've been doing something for like a long time doesn't mean you're good at it. No. Because, and I, I won't say any names here, but I have like <laughs> seen comedians who are like, yeah, I've been doing this for 10 years. I'm like, dude, you're horrible at it for 10 years? Mm-hmm. No. I, I was like, 10 years in, you should be like really fucking good at this stuff. Yeah, no, I feel that. Some people, I don't know. Some people just don't. I don't think, I mean, I personally don't think I have it. I just like doing it, but... <laughs> yeah, I'm doing it because it's fun. Oh, it's so much like, fun. Like, how'd you, how'd you get into it? Well, pretty much this is the class that we started. I, Me and uh, my roommate, Austin Blackmore, he does comedy as well. Uh, we just would sit in our room sometimes and just, like, kind of, like, think about stupid stuff. We watched stand-up all the time. We both loved it. And, like, one day he talked about, like, like Second City, you know, like, Second City in oh, Chicago. Yeah. And, like, yeah. how he's, like, sometimes thought about going there. And I was just, like... You know, like, I've kind of, like, like comedy. Like, I write and stuff like that, and I've tried to write some comedy. And then we just kind of would, like, write bits back and forth and, like, see what worked. And then I Googled, like, Comedy Classes Michigan just to, like, see, like, what there was or, like, anything that, like, someone could give you tips or anything like that. And I found Bill's class, and then we had just gotten out of the our 
what semester is that? Spring semester. Yeah, it's the second one. Yes, so spring. <laughs> and we got out of spring semester and we were home and I like looked it up and I saw that the class was starting like that week, like that Saturday. So like, I called and was like, do you guys have any spots? So, like, yeah, we have some open spots. So, like I reserved my spot. I called Augie. We call him Augie. And I was just like, you, you need to do this. Like we need to do this. Like we need to like, cause we kind of knew the gist. Like it said that you had to like go on stage and like workshop jokes and like with Bill Bouchard, like, yep. That, like, say, Oh, I, has anything happened to me? I'm like, my, I'm like, I, I did, I did two, I did three open mics here, like, um, on like MSU's campus. Mm-hmm. The first one went phenomenal. Like mm-hmm. I did really, really well. Before the class? Yeah. Before like, the class. Mm-hmm. Like I was so happy with it and it went great. The second time. <laughs> and then, <laughs> the, the things did not go the way I planned. <laughs> I made them, I told a dick joke on stage and in my, here's the thing. In my mind, it was the mm-hmm. funniest shit I ever heard in my life. Mm-hmm. But then when I told it on stage, like. It was bad. Like, they just... Because, mm-hmm. like, they were with me for the first half. I told that joke, and I just got blank stares from everybody. And I had my friend record That's it. The worst. Yeah, and, like, I look back at the recording. I was like, man, I thought it was funny as shit. And I did not tell it right. And when I say I didn't tell it right, I mean, I missed, like, a whole very important part of it. Oh, shit. And I think, like, the punchline was just, and black dick. And then everyone was like, <laughs> the hell? And I was like, oh, shit, I forgot... Uh, <laughs> and black dick. That was. Yeah. It could be a good punchline if you had a bit of uh, introduction to it, but yeah, no, I bypassed the introduction. <laughs> we went straight to the punchline. There was no setup. The delivery was half-assed. Black dick. <laughs> black dick. <laughs> I I thought it was funny because in my mind I told the whole joke, mm. and I just like I remember holding a microphone and I'm looking around, like this is the stage, and I was like, nobody said shit. There was not a single sound out of any human being. It was bad. The Silence th- is the worst. I that, found. Like, you're just yeah. up there and... I'd rather you boo. <laughs> I, I want you to say something. I want you to at least interact with me so I can, like, talk to you yeah. for a second or yeah, something. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like, I just... I'm, I'm just like... It's like Ricky Bobby. Like, I'm sitting up there with the mic. Like, I, I don't quite know what to do with my hands right now. <laughs> like, I don't, yep. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm getting off stage. That's my time, guys. I don't know. I've seen... I've seen people, well, I did see, like, during the Detroit to L.A. contest at um, the Comedy Castle, I saw someone bomb, and it was, like, horrible. Really? It was bad. Yeah, like, this is also one of those people who's like, yeah, I've been doing comedy for, like, five, six years, and I'm really into it, and I'm, like, doing all this stuff, Mm -hmm. and they got on stage. I was like, dude, you're horrible at this. (laughs) Like, I just didn't know, because I thought it was just me. Like, I didn't want, I didn't tell them out loud, Mm -hmm. but... When I was in the green room, people were like, he was saying he's doing it for six years. I'm like, so it's not just me. Like, this dude actually <laughs> sucks. So I don't know what... Also, doing these uh, doing these comedy contests, what I found, which is complete bullshit, in my, in my opinion, but uh, how you, how the voting goes down is you'll vote... I hate contests. It's so... I've, like, only, I've done, I think, three already. In my show, I've done three, and I'm, I'm sick of them already. I don't, I don't get how you can judge it. Like, I really don't yeah. get it. I, I, I asked, like, a few people around. I finally figured out, like, what happens. And it's complete crap. So, so the well, the, so the judges, there's, like, usually three or four judges of, like, who mm-hmm. are actual, like, real, like, Bill, I think, he didn't tell me he was one of the judges, but I'm assuming he would, he fits the profile of, like, being one of them. Mm-hmm. Like, he's actually getting paid to do comedy. He's good at it. Oh, yeah. And stuff like that, right? So you have, that's, like, one vote. And then you have, like, popular audience vote. That's the second one. See, I like the audience votes. That's, that's what I thought until... The like this one dude brought like freaking fifty people, yeah. mm-hmm. and he not to, he wasn't like he wasn't horrible at it right. But the thing was, he told his friends to not laugh at other comedians. That's the worst. That's the part that really got to me. I was like, if it's funny, laugh. Mm-hmm. Like, why would you hold back laughter? I don't get it. I did a contest at Laugh Tracks. I don't know what it was called. I can't remember. It was like Laugh Tracks Comedy Showdown or something like that, and. We had, I had a similar experience like that. Like, I brought, like, a couple... Just, like, family members. I didn't bring, like, a whole slew of people, but one person brought, like, a good amount of people, and they, yeah. were, they were so hesitant to laugh at other jokes. Like, I got a couple laughs, but I... It was, like, my timing was off just because of it. Like, the, I was just standing there just kind of looking around. I was like, well, I'll, you guys laughed at other <laughs> shit that... <laughs> oh, the same thing happened to me. Yeah, I feel you. When I, was, like, when I got off that stage, I was like, man, because the exact same set I did at, like, a grad show... And yeah. I did an open mic. I'm like, this shit killed over there. Yeah, yeah. Like, what happened all of a sudden? Like, same everything. I'm I like, don't get it. If anything, I thought I told it better. And mm-hmm. then I got off and, like, my mom came to that. And then she was like, yeah. So I was talking to some of the audience members. And they said that they wanted me to know I was funny. But they were told not to laugh at me. 
So I was like, what the fuck? That's dumb as fuck. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, so that means the fact that I got a little bit of laughs means it must have been great. Yeah. When people are saying, don't laugh yeah. at this guy. Because, um, like, the, the, the person who bought all these people, he walked out on stage, everyone just lit up. And I was like, holy... You can, like, tell at that point. Oh, you're like, you're like, obvious. Well, he's, he's moving on. It was so obvious. He didn't win. But, because in the final... This is what I like about the Comedy Castle. Their contests are phenomenal. Because mm-hmm. they have audience vote and judge vote all the way until the finals. And then when you, the finals? Just judges. Oh, really? Audience don't... They, they don't give a shit about the audience. Because they're like... I mean, the judges know when someone's good and someone's bad. Like, they yeah. can tell when it's like, yeah, you brought 50 people. Like, no. Yeah. So, that's something that I like about that place. A few other comedy clubs don't do that. Which I'm like, I can... I can understand, like, you want the audience, like, you know, be the judge of who's funny and who's not. Mm-hmm. But when someone just brings, like, so many people, like, no, are they true. really funnier than the other comedians? And that's, but uh, Laugh Tracks did it kind of good, though, with, like, they did, like, a point system. They did, like, so, like, you ranked, like, your comedians, like, so, like, your favorite, you're, like, your second favorite, third favorite, so you got, like, three points, two points, one point, so... Like, two people advance, so, like, even if, like, a person brought a shit ton of people, like, if you, like, did a good set, like, hopefully they, like, put you at second place, and, like, a lot of people gave you second place votes, like, along with the first place votes, and then... Oh, okay. So, like, I kind of like that. I, I didn't... Oh, advance. that's better. Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't advance, but it's whatever. Yeah, I think I did two contests, didn't make it out of any of them. I did Detroit to LA as well. I think Melanie and... Melanie Hearn made it out of mine, and Mike Dunn. And Mike Dunn was in the class before us. Yeah, I'm like, Mike Dunn, that name sounds familiar. Good guy. Where have I heard? Yeah, like, Sammy, it's really familiar. He, uh, because he rehearsed his, uh, grad show set our first day of class. I remember that. Okay, then that's to, probably where... We had to watch a lot of them, like, Eric Walker, I think, was in that, too. Eric's awesome. Mm-hmm. I like him. Mm-hmm. Eric's, Eric's really cool. He, he actually, um, my, I took the class twice, yeah, and yeah. he recorded, like, my whole first... first like, um, like the whole class, he recorded, like, everyone's set. and just gave it out to everybody. Oh, that's awesome. Like, that was really nice. I wish I would have... Because my I really liked my set, my for, my grad show and my Detroit to LA show, but I didn't get either of them recorded. I was so mad. Oh, really? I didn't get either of them recorded. My the, the my first one I got recorded was funny because I was supposed to go first in my first grad class, mm-hmm. but I guess... You did? Wait, no. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, what's his face went first? Uh... What's his face? I don't remember his name, to be honest. The older guy. Yes. Yeah. He went first. I remember his name. Joey. That's what... I think it was... I ha- it had to be There was Joey. someone in the class named Joey, and he was an older guy. I don't know who it was. He was wearing, he was wearing like, the beach shirt. There it is! Yes, there it is. That guy, he was actually... He was, I, I like... Joey was awesome. He was... I fucked with Joey. I, I thought, fucked with Joey. I liked him... To be honest, I liked him more as a human being than as a comedian. Like, he was really funny oh, off stage. Awesome. He was oh, he's really funny off stage. Dead pan. Yeah, just, exactly. Just straight away. But he, uh, he, so his friend was supposed to record him. And I guess because, like, me and him, like, switched. Like, he told his friend, yes, yeah, so record whoever goes on, like, first or, like, whoever goes on second. Mm-hmm. So I, I was supposed to go on first, so but he, he went first, I went second. He recorded my whole thing, like, top-notch HD quality. That's awesome. And he was nice enough to, like, email me. He like, hey, man, so... This guy recorded you instead. Do you want the video? I'm like, yeah. Fuck yeah, I want the video. It was, it was a good it. ass video. There's so much fun performing there too. Like the whole like backstage and the green room and everything like yeah. that. Yeah. I love the quote wall. I can't, I, I want to write on that wall someday, but. <laughs> yep. There's a lot of stuff on that wall. So fucking cool. Yeah, for people who don't know what we're talking about, like there's um, in, in the back of like, actually in quite a few like comedy clubs, they just have a wall where people can sign it or you mm-hmm. have like a picture and you autograph it. You put it up there, mm-hmm. and Comedy Castle is huge. Oh, it's fucking mad. I had no idea how many people actually performed there. Mm-hmm. Well, I was actually, uh, who was it? I was watching a podcast, or Dave Landau. Yeah, he was doing a, some sort of podcast or TV show, and he was talking about how Mark Ridley was actually like one of like the biggest names in comedy. Like way back, so like there was the Comedy Store in Los Angeles. Yep. There was the Improv in New York, and then there was Mark Ridley's in here like that was like, really at a time there those were like really like the three biggest comedy clubs in like in the country wow okay and, yeah how crazy is i that? didn't know that damn yeah, I, I didn't know that until shit i probably watched that like a week or two ago i've been watching a lot of dave landau shit recently he's fucking amazing so what did did he do mark Lee do stand-up or was he known for like clubs? i think, i know he doesn't i know he manages a little bit I th- okay i think he does like a little bit of management but i know he i mean he runs that i don't yeah, I think he still runs the club. I don't know. I think, yeah, Bill talked about 
And like he I've said, he'll. Him. Yeah, I never met him, but he's like he comes out to the club. Oh yeah, he's like here and, and I there. I remember there was like the uh, the video camera that always like watched our stuff. Yeah, it's like, like he's like, always watching. Might, might be watching. <laughs> yep. Oh my god. They said it as a joke, but he lo- could be though. Low key, I think he actually is watching. Well, because like a couple people that have like did like Detroit to LA shows and stuff, like Mark, mm-hmm. Mark from our class. I love he's, Mark. He's hosting. Awesome. He's gonna be hosting at the castle. I don't know when. I can't remember the date, but I want to go and watch him. But. I mean, wow. it's possible. Mark made it to the finals in the Detroit to LA. I, I, Mark is hilarious. He's been doing it for quite a while, too. Has and he's he been? funny. Yeah, he's been doing it for, like, I think three, four years. Oh, really? So he but, wasn't, like, just starting off, like, when he went to class. No, no. See, like, that was my first ever, like, stand up exposure. Yeah, my, like, was my class, class with you was my second, like, ever, like, because uh, the way that I gauged it was after going to, like, a, like a real stand up, like, comedy club, and, like, I got mm-hmm. so much better. I actually knew a lot more, mm-hmm. and I just realized more about myself on stage. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I had no idea how fast I was speaking. Oh, my God. Because for, for yeah, so for any stage performance, by the way, for those of you who don't know, one second on that stage of silence feels like an eternity forever it feels for like it'll like never end Mm -hmm. that's why i just sped through my like performance because i hated that silence Mm -hmm. but like when you have a microphone like you can only hear yourself you can't hear anyone else like in the audience have you done a show yet where like the crowd is just so fucking loud you can't even hear yourself i've done i mean i've done like a drunk crowd before but i've like they weren't that loud oh my god i did this show in bay city and people were so I I couldn't I could not hear myself talking on stage. I could not I could not hear the really? only words I was saying. Like I was just like my time like I couldn't hear fuck and then uh a couple comedians that were just sitting in the back, like just chilling, waiting to like go up. I went back they said, Yeah, we couldn't hear a word you said. Couldn't hear it. What? <laughs> They're in the back, they said we we couldn't hear you. It's like what? <laughs> so did you do well? Or? I no. <laughs> oh really? No. I, I got like I think I got pity laughs because I and I did the same set like I did the same set I did the other night at Crunchies and at the grad show and they got some laughs like I could hear like the laughs and like people that were like right up front that could hear me talk and they'd be like yeah this kid's kind of lame. whatever <laughs> like oh shit I thought your thing at Crunchies was really funny like I enjoyed it you're. I like the way you ended your set. Well, I'm not gonna give it away. Like, watch him for yourself. Mm-hmm. It's actually but, that set's on YouTube now. Oh, it is. I put it up on YouTube. Oh, wait, tell them where to find it. Uh, you can just you uh, just search on YouTube Luke Nesbitt stand up comedy. I think the channel is just Luke Nesbitt. I'm not too into like YouTube and stuff like that yet. I have two videos up there. There's like one's like a three and a half minute video, and one said mm-hmm. it was only. I actually was only up there for six minutes. I was hmm. like they like I thought they lighted me. And then I was like, all right, I need to get off. Like, I, I got one more. Right. And then I looked at the video, and the video was only six minutes long. Like, oh. Whatever. I, oh, yeah, the first time I went up at Crunchy is I did it, like, like, my seven minutes at Ridley's was, like, barely five minutes there. Because <laughs> I just kept talking so freaking fast. Well, and, and was, dude, like, there were so many people there. Oh, when we went, oh, it was packed. That mm-hmm. place, I don't, I don't even know what it was that day. It was full, like, I, it was full capacity. Like, they, like, put the, yeah. the half curtain up, and it was full capacity. I don't... They always fill that thing. It was full for my, like, it was probably full for your Detroit to LA show, I'm guessing. It was... Ours was... It cool. was pretty full. <laughs> it, that, that's so much fun, performing it. And, and performing in a comedy club setting, like, as opposed to, like, bars and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It is so much different, because people are there, like... It's weird, like, when you perform at, like, the open mics during the week and stuff like that because most of them are free. So the people that are at the show, some of them didn't know there was a comedy show going on in the first place. And some of them oh, are just really? kind of there. Like, oh, yeah. There's such, well, that was funny. Like, Louis. Yeah. Yeah. Louis. He said that at the beginning of country. He's like, so before 10 minutes ago, who here, like, knew there was a comedy oh, yeah, show going yeah, yeah. on? Oh, yeah. He did say that. And so, like, you just get crowds like that that aren't don't want to listen. They're just like, oh, fuck this guy. I'm going to talk to this. Like, I'm going to talk to my friend. People. Oh pisses me off something people don't realize about comedy is that you don't don't, it's it's very hard to gauge if uh if a comedian is good or not at a stand-up performance Mm -hmm. because uh, for music for example right if you go to a concert you know what you're listening to yeah like if i go to like a whiskey for concert because i actually have Mm -hmm. like i know what kind of music is it it was um, dte was like fallout boy Wiz khalifa i was there oh you were there i was there oh i love that (laughs) that that was dope (laughs) yeah so I had a I had a phenomenal time there. But like when you go, like you know the artists, you know like if they have any other sort of like people um, like opening for them, yeah. you know what kind of music it's gonna be just mm-hmm. based off the um, headliner. 
Mm-hmm. But when you go to a comedy club, you don't know what kind of comedy is gonna is gonna like you know show up. Mm-hmm. You're, you're just going there. It's like okay, hopefully they make me laugh. Mm-hmm. But it's like it, it, that's why I don't get. It's hard to tell when someone's bad at comedy from one open mic because yeah. you could. You don't know what they're going to say beforehand. And it's all context, too, as well. Exactly. That's what Bill said the first day. It's just like, you don't, like, those people have to kind of know what you're going to talk about. Like, no, not that's not the way to word it. Like, they have to understand it in some sense, or they're not going to find it funny. Yeah, exactly. Like, I can, so if, they're not, if they can't relate to it, it's That's like, what it is. Yeah, you can't relate to it. If you can, if the audience likes you, that's more than half the battle right there. Like that's what I at, when at Crunchies when I uh, opened up with like the whole medical marijuana becoming more popular in the state of Michigan. Mm-hmm. I was just like, like uh, that whole side room screen. I was like, this is gonna be a good. Set. Yep, that's and how then, you know. I was like, this is gonna be a fun set. I'm gonna weed heavy jokes and oh, that was such a fun set. I can't. I'm. I should be back at Crunchies next month. Yep, me too. Maybe we'll be on the same show. Could be, could Maybe be. This is gonna be a theme. Every time I come to stay, I'm gonna be on a oh, show. Oh, that'd be you. dope. We should definitely get that going. I, I I will tell you one thing about um I'm drinking a lot of water. I know you made you thirsty shit. Yeah. <laughs> I did notice when you went up and when I went up and there were two other people, like all of us had the same thing in common, and like we were all like brand new comedians, but I think it's a huge mistake whenever someone gets on stage and says, Hey, how are you guys doing? Because I'm like, you've automatically, like, that's just what everyone else does. Mm-hmm. So I was like, when you went up there, you did, like, a, like a medical marijuana joke. So I was like, that's how you do it. Like, when I went up there, I was like, hey, so... And the- <laughs> I fucking love that. I don't know I don't- why I love that joke so much, but every time I hear it... I, yeah, I went up there, and be- before you say, like, how's everybody doing, like, what's going on, whatever, like, you gotta open up with... So the fact that I'm here, uh, I was like, oh my god, how did I start it? Now I forgot. Oh, yeah, it's like a lot of you probably thinking if I'm up here, who's doing tech support? <laughs> <laughs> but that's how you do it. Like you can't start off. Then with you follow you up. You're like, and then yeah, but my brother's got it. He's yeah, fine. it's a family business. <laughs> you know what the craziest part is? My uncle actually does tech support. He's into <laughs> IT. Yeah, he's, he's good at it too. I'm true of the stereotypes. No. Yeah, no stereotypes are. Re- I don't. I don't no. make the stereotypes. No. I just make fun of them. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's like, all. It's all free game. I want people to make fun of me. Like I. I want. He's white. He's fat. He can't <laughs> jump. <laughs> Go run a post route. Not gonna happen, buddy. <laughs> right? You know, no. <laughs> I've made fun of people like just in the audience, and this is what I've noticed: when I make fun of somebody, the person that I'm making fun of, they love it. Mm-hmm. Like they're dying laughing. They're having a great time. Mm-hmm. People around them are like, oh, "He's insensitive. Whatever. What are you talking about? That was rude." I'm like, "What? Why are you here?" Like, you came to a comedy club just to say that we're insensitive and rude. Like, you don't have to be here. Mm-hmm. Like, not, not to dissuade anyone from That's what always up. pisses me off is when people will, like, start, like, heckling and talking back at the comedians. Just like, bro, like, you, you, this guy has enough courage to get up there and stand and talk to you guys. He doesn't need you trying to be, like, trying to be Mr. Funny Guy and, like, one-up him. And most of the time, I fucking love when comedians just wreck hecklers. I that's, love it, That's too. honestly my favorite thing. I was Cam Rowe. I was at a show. He he made this dude like this dude almost wanted to fight him. <laughs> he just oh, like, what? oh it was so bad because he was saying like he was just saying this dude was just like on like just like looked like a crackhead. He's just calling him a crackhead. Just like time after <laughs> can't remember this guy's name. It was it was a, such a fucking weird name. It was like Tyson or some shit <laughs> like that. I shouldn't have said the name. Maybe, oh but. yeah, well, well, it's okay. No one knows a Tyson. Sorry about so. that, but <laughs> uh. Where was I going? Holy shit. <laughs> like, crackhead, about to oh, yeah. fight him. Yeah, no, and he just stood up, and then Cam was just like, and dude, and Cam Rowe is 6, 9, 6, 10. Ooh. He's, <laughs> Ooh. Oh, they call him, it's Cam Big Fellow Rowe. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. And, like, I'm just, this little dude, this little crackhead, da- like, he was right, this dude was on, like, there's no way this dude wasn't on crack. <laughs> and... <laughs> He's just, like, making fun of, like, saying he, like, lost his job and shit. Like, because this dude was had been drunk, like, all day. Apparently, that had come up previously in the show. This b- dude had been drunk since, like, 5 p.m. or something like that. It was on, like, a Wednesday. <laughs> My gosh. He's like, yeah, that's what happens when you lose your job, I guess. Like, Cam said that. And then this dude started getting up. He's like, I, don't, I have a fucking job. And he's just, like, starts standing <laughs> up. And Cam's just like, buddy, like, I don't give a fuck. I don't care you lost I your know. job. You don't need to take it out on me. Go out in the parking lot. Take a hit of crack. Come back in. We'll have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Alcohol is the cause and solution to all of life's problems. 
Yeah. Dude, that guy's <laughs> six nine. Oh, he's fucking mammoth. Jeez. Well, his dad is uh, what's his name? I can't remember his first name, but uh, he was an NBA All Star. Um, he had to be something row. <laughs> what's his name? Uh. Shit, I can't remember. Camera was amazing. I've that's been the coolest part about comedy, honestly, is like being me. able to meet all these comedians yep. and stuff like that. Like I've gotten to meet, uh, like Alton Williams. They call him Boogie. Boogie Williams. He was on com- he was on uh, Kevin Hart's uh, Heart of the City mm-hmm. on Comedy Central. Him, uh, Mike Mike Jeter, I believe that's how you pronounce his last name. He's and everyone's so cool. Everyone's so cool. Like yeah. especially as a newcomer, I've I haven't really found many people that are like they'll like stick their nose up to me or anything like that when I come like looking for tips I'm like hey man like I'm extremely young yep like, I haven't even been in comedy for a year yet like I my it'll be a year in June for like my first like from what my first show was mm-hmm. but and it's just been everyone's been so like they've never one's ever hesitated to give me like tips or advice of like writing jokes like stage presence stuff like that it's it's been such a fun process that's I don't think I've met any like complete assholes that's, like, when you ask, like, hey, man, like, g- you give me some advice on, like, how to ask for, I don't know, like, a spot on, like, a spot on stage, a guest spot, something like that. Mm-hmm. I never had someone just go, no, you don't deserve it. But yeah. Like, well, shit. I, I've had people <laughs> tell me, like, I'll ask for spots, but, like, you need to work a little bit more, you know, put your, like, time in. I, I understand that, but, yeah. What, I'll tell you what I've got the most of is when I started putting stuff on YouTube, mm-hmm. and this is, uh, I'm not going to say the comedian's name, but there were, like, there were two of them, and this was... After the Comedy Castle, like this was after the Detroit LA contest, it was like outside. I was walking back to my car, and these two guys came up to me. They were like, "Hey, um, one of them I knew from like like high school or something," mm-hmm. and they were like, "Hey, so like, we saw your thing on like YouTube," and I was I was like, "Oh, that's what's up. Thank you." And that's dope. out of nowhere, he's like, "Yeah, you should stop doing that." <laughs> like, what? what, what, what? I'm like, who, who is you? <laughs> huh? Oh, fuck that! You're like, why are you telling? Like why, why are you telling me what to do? Oh, fuck that! People are too scared. But, yeah, but his lot because he started doing comedy too, and his logic was, well, you're not good enough yet, so you shouldn't be uploading your material because then people will think that this is how you are, or this is like how good you are, like how good you are, whatever, whatever. And I was like, wait, well, why do you care what I'm doing? Dude, why the fuck are you? Uh, why are you even concerned with me? You should be concerned with yourself. Yeah, and I found out what he was actually talking about because I someone else at Crunchies brought this up to me. Like this was this is maybe a month ago, and I told him I was uploading my stuff, and he was like, Yeah, I did that too. It's a bad idea. I'm like, why? He's like, Well, because then when you film your special, people will know all your jokes beforehand. I'm like, No. No. <laughs> no. I'm like, for, for one thing, I have just started. Well, why, why, why are we even and thinking about a special? <laughs> that, I'm, I'm struggling to get open mic spots at this that's point. That's like, what I'm, I said. I'm throwing, I'm throwing my clips up on YouTube hoping people see me. Yeah. Like, that's what, that's why yep. I'm throwing shit on YouTube. I'm not, I don't care if it's like, I just want people to see me and hope they think I'm good. I don't give a fuck about it. That was my exact my special. logic. special. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus special? Christ. I haven't. Like, I haven't even been doing this for one year yet. Dude, I have, like, a solid 15 minutes, maybe. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'll tell you if I have one by Saturday, if they laugh. Mm Mm-hmm. That's the only backlash I've ever gotten was I've had people consistently, they're like, don't put your stuff on YouTube. And for the same reason, it's like, well, then people will know your jokes before you get there. I'm like, you know what? Less than 300 people have actually seen <laughs> any of my stuff yet. Yeah. Like, I don't mind if they see it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I, like what you said, like, I would gladly let you watch it and then comment this guy's funny. And I'll be like, hey, I'm going to be in this town at this time. Come out. Mm-hmm. That's way better. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, where's your special? And it is a lot different in person. Like, be, just because we upload seven minutes, like, on YouTube, it's like, We'll do the same seven minutes, but it could, it, it'll be slightly different. We'll throw a different joke in. It'll here be there. better. We'll do different taglines, maybe, or like stuff like that. It's not, it's not always the same every single time. It's, right? There's, I've, oh yeah. It's it, never the same audience. No, never. So it'll never be the same set. The, the yeah. what? What I did know, I didn't know this beforehand. When I did like my seven minutes uh, for the first grad show, I thought I was like, all right, I'm good with this. Let's do a new seven minutes. I did the same. I did the same seven minutes I did at a different venue. Mm-hmm. It was really different, and I didn't expect it. I'm like, I, I think when you do the same seven minute open mic set like consistently, you will get better just oh, yeah. telling it. Oh yeah, and you'll get more comfortable on stage. And that's what I started doing. Was my biggest fear was that I would just forget what to say while I was on stage. Yeah, 
because I'm like I don't know what I would do in that case. But I like, would. I was always so scared that I would like ha- I would just rehearse for just hours. On me end. too. Yeah. And like I'll see people post that like they don't like to practice their jokes. They don't like to rehearse them. What? But, oh yeah. There's a lot of people that just like to write and just hammer them out at open mics and stuff like that, and just try to work them out. And I, I do, how? Well, because you never know what the how the crowd is gonna react to a joke. So that is like the best way to really try out a joke and practice it is to like head to open mics. Like I'm going to an open mic tonight in Gross Point. And I plan on doing a lot of new stuff there tonight to, like, see how it works. But I've, like, this is stuff that I've, like, done in the shower and done in my car, like, trying to get, like, like just, like, the specific words down. But mm-hmm. you never know, like, the be- like, truly the best way to practice is going on open mics. I've noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, you really do have to, like, I don't know. It's, it's I could different never for everybody. I'm talking in circles right now, but. I could, oh, well, I can never do, like not practice a joke beforehand and get up on that stage like my mm-hmm. well my logic is that i would rather just have like i'd rather have the joke like from like beginning middle to end and then just tell the whole thing that way if people laugh or don't laugh i can rewatch my like recording yeah. of it and then i'll know where to improve the joke mm-hmm. because if i just tell like the first part of it and if no one's getting reaction then you, like the second half of the joke might be the funniest part but like, like, you're not gonna know that unless you tell the whole thing yeah so I, I I don't I'm not sure if I agree with like not rehearsing beforehand and then mm-hmm. telling it like that. Maybe I'm just not good enough to do that yet. See, I, well, I, yeah, I haven't done either. I've never like thought about something and then. Oh, well, actually, there's I've done like a couple things. Like one time I was before I went on stage, uh, like uh, this one guy told me he's like, hey, like I and you only uh, I only need you to do three minutes instead of five. Like he was just like, okay. I, he's like he cut me down two minutes. I was like, all right. Went up on stage. Was like, so uh, the producer over there just told me I uh, only have three minutes now, so this would be very similar to having sex with me. <laughs> That's fun. I was like, yeah. The only thing is, I don't know what to do with the extra two minutes and forty five yeah. seconds. So we're gonna have some fun. Like it's very typical, but like it was, it got me going. Like it got the set going good and stuff like that. Yeah. When I opened for that contest, I remember like this was while I was in the green room. I wrote this down because like whoever the MC was, he would just. But MC for my like Detroit to LA wasn't the greatest. I don't. We had hecklers and like he he got destroyed. But did he? Oh yeah, it was bad. Uh, but the good part was when he was describing the contest. Like, like when, when I went on stage, I was like, okay, so I heard that this is a contest being. I was like, I I know that this is a contest being judged for fairness. So since it's not a democracy, I'll start talking. And then it went off. People loved it. Did they? Yep. That's awesome. And that's how I'm always afraid. Like if I tell an opening joke, that if if right if they hate the opening, I'm like shit. This is where stuff goes bad. That's why I think mm-hmm. the like I start off with like my IT joke because I'm like it's self deprecating oh, humor. To, you always have to start with you have to start with something strong. Yeah, I'm like I, th- that's that's one of the reasons I hate. I how are you guys doing tonight? As fucking possible. That's the thing. That Bill stressed that the most. Mm-hmm. It's like when you get on stage, your first laugh yeah. has to be within the first like thirty seconds. I haven't gone away from like anything Bill has really told us, and it's like I, I've I've seen like a lot of bigger name comedians like talk shit about comedy classes. Yes, and stuff like that. They be too. like, if you've like taken a comedy class, like you like you should like you're already you're already done. Mm-hmm. Like if you need I've to take a that. comedy class, you're already done. But it was in even Bill like touched on that our first day. He's like, This is not like a class. I'm not gonna teach you how to write a joke. I'm not gonna teach you comedy. I'm gonna put you up on stage, I'm gonna let you talk and we're gonna we're gonna see where you're at. We're, and then we're gonna try to build your confidence. We're gonna build stage presence. We're not we're not gonna teach you anything. Your material is your material. If you can't write, that's on you. Mm-hmm. Bill will tell you that. He's like, if you're not funny, like I can't teach you to be funny. Yeah, you cannot teach how to be funny. No. You can't you can teach like um, how to organize a joke. Yeah. And, like, you can teach structure, But right? even and some kids in our class, like, even after the full six weeks, like, we would see that, like... Like, they, like they, knew, they knew how to put together, like, introduction, punchline, tagline. Yeah, but they weren't funny. Yeah. So, like, you can take, like... And that's what, like, I think the big-name comedians really shit on that for is because, like, you have, like, those types of people take it, but... For, for people like us that were, like... Especially me, like, I used to have extremely bad stage fright. Mm-hmm. I used to like like even at, while doing stand up I was doing a like a presentation in class like I had done a set the previous night and like wasn't bad on stage like I had a, like a panic borderline panic attack like in the front of class like trying to like read this paper because like it's yeah. not like it's just like weird academic material and I'm just like nervous like I didn't have it memorized like I would have a joke memorized I was just like people are staring at me I can't make yeah. them laugh right now but Bill has taught like that class taught me so much about like 
Public speaking is public speaking hard. Like that. Like, if you haven't done it, I recommend it because mm-hmm. I think the hardest part about it is just doing the first one. Yeah, no. And once you do that, the first one, you can tell yourself that I've done it. Exa- that, that's why the hardest part is just the first time. Mm-hmm. And I think you're... What I tell people about, like, I encourage everyone to do public speaking, not just, like, stand-up comedy, but oh, yeah. give a speech. Do something to public speak, right? Yeah. Like, and you can't... I love it now. I love it. Oh, talking. now I'm obsessed, yeah. Oh, my God. I, any any class I'm in, like, we'll be doing group work, and they'll be like, so, like, what are we going to do? Like, who's going to do what? Well? Like, like, I'll talk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, oh, yeah. You guys do the work. I'll, I'm a soldier. I'll follow orders, but uh, I'll talk. That's what I'm good at. I Yeah, because it's I, the first time, and it's just easy after that. Mm-hmm. I, it's all just about having confidence in yourself that, like, yes, and you, you can't give a fuck. What no, think you about can't. Because if you, you that's when you can. lose it. Like, mm-hmm. don't care what people think. Nope. Because that's that's when shit goes bad. Like, because mm-hmm. I mean, if you care what people think, then you'll never do what you want to do. No, and you that'll, that'll hurt your writing because you, you'll start writing. It'll hurt yourself. everything. You'll be like, well, what if you? you as soon as you start thinking like, what are people gonna think about this? The joke's bad, in my opinion. I agree. Like, yep. yep. You can't ever. <laughs> I did this joke about <laughs> disabled, like on Twitter. You know, you see the videos of like disabled kids like mm-hmm. getting into basketball games oh, and like geez. yeah, they'll let them like shoot and score a basket or like stuff like that. And I, I did a show and I talked about how I hate those videos. <laughs> oh, gosh, <laughs> <clears throat> I was like, life isn't fair. Life is fair, and like a lot of the kids with disabilities will like preach that they want to be treated just as equally as all of us. Mm-hmm. So when you come on the court with all sub five foot, you're gonna <laughs> spot the shit out of you just like everybody else. <laughs> That's a like, good point. I, I, mean, was, I was like, I'm not saying you can't play. I'm, not, I'm yeah, exactly. No, I'm saying just step back a little bit, create <laughs> some distance. Like Steph Curry, short, he makes it work. I don't know, right? And I did that joke on stage and. <laughs> <laughs> I hate, I get off stage. There was a girl with muscular dystrophy in the crowd. <laughs> oh <laughs> shit! Oh my gosh! <laughs> and it actually did get some. Well, because I followed it up too. I was like, same thing with football. Like, you come around the corner. I got a line. I'm, I'm a linebacker. I got one job: contain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I'm an asshole. All I'm saying is I'm a team player. <laughs> That's six <laughs> points. I never. I, I didn't tell. I did tell a joke about um because well, one of my friends like he's been in a wheelchair his whole life mm-hmm. so I I mess with him about that like I I, yeah. I, I like the emergency brakes on him all the time. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is okay. I've known this guy for over ten years. We do shit like this to each other all the time. That's fucking awesome though. <laughs> but yeah, like, like, I do it to him. He doesn't care. No. But everyone else is like, you're being insensitive, <laughs> and then. In public, the worst thing about it is if I do it to him and like, because if, if we're just like walking down, I'm like, hey, Professor Xavier. And he, <laughs> but everyone else is like offended. He's laughing about it. Yeah. And like sometimes I'll just like kick one of his wheels. <laughs> but I'm like, this is like one of my best friends. Oh, I talk to him all the time. Of course. And I wrote a joke about him and he said it was hilarious, but he's like, don't tell it on stage. I'm like, why? Because like people don't know that we're best friends. So this is why I don't get. Why is it people in wheelchairs always have worn out shoes? What? That shit blows my mind because I've never seen anyone in a wheelchair with brand new Jordans or a brand new short. Like, you know, brand new anything shoes. They're always worn out. See? That look in your face. You know it's true. It's that bullshit. <laughs> it's it's, that, it's that, bullshit, that bullshit, bro. I'm like, how are their shoes worn out, man? <laughs> don't lie to me. But at the same time, I can't see them. Peeping their kicks when I'm looking no. at a fucking dude in a wheelchair. <laughs> I ain't keeping a shoe no. game. I'm keeping my eye contact. Of, I'm keeping eye contact. <laughs> oh, all right, look, we we're out of time. Give a if you want to give a shout out to your Instagram, go ahead. Uh yeah, uh, you can follow me on Instagram. I believe it's just Luke Nesbit seventy six, and then on Twitter it is Luke underscore Nesbit seventy six. And this has been a lot of fun, man. This is my first podcast. This has been super fucking fun. Thank you for being here, man. I appreciate it. That's fucking awesome, bro. All right. Stay fresh. Stay golden, everyone. Hell yeah.